Welcome to this new video presentation. I recently discovered an article on a website which I'll link in the video description since it's not my own creation. However, it's in English and what this individual did was compare various browsers for Windows 11 as you might refer to them and they reached a conclusion. As you can observe, the article is quite lengthy. If you wish, you can come and read it. It's genuinely intriguing. That decision is up to each of you. However, in this video, I'll provide a brief summary since, as I mentioned, the the article is quite extensive, but in this video, I'll offer a concise summary with all the information contained within. Essentially, in this article, what this person does is compare 10 different browsers using various benchmarks, meaning they perform different calculations with different tools and some tests. These browsers are entirely dedicated to Windows 11. You can obviously use them on Windows 10, on Mac if you prefer, but let's say all of these are fully available on Windows. So this person tested these browsers, which are practically the most popular ones under the same conditions and shared the results with us here so we can choose what suits us best in this case this person used a pc with windows 11 installed and on this windows they tested each browser in each of these browsers which you can see here and we'll see which ones they are they open 10 common tabs meaning tabs you can use in your daily life including pages with benchmarking and measured ram and cpu usage in this scenario meaning the most useful one the one that uses resources in the most appropriate way then this person used a benchmark called speedometer to measure browsing speed and another program called browser audit benchmark to evaluate security points as you can see this person did a lot of things here you can see all the rankings to check the results but they explain them in detail later so let's just say the quick result is that the one using the least ram among all these is precisely the one i'm using right now which is brave As we delve into the discussion of each browser, I will be displaying the page so you can visit and download the browser or alternatively, I'll also include it in the video description for your convenience. This is the Brave web page and as you can distinctly observe, the browser that utilized the smallest amount of RAM was indeed Brave with merely 546 megabytes for the 10 tabs. Therefore, as we can discern here, Edge consumed 670 megabytes, Vivaldi 831, UR Browser 836, Opera 973, Mozilla Firefox 980, Opera 1100, which is practically equivalent to 1.1 gigabytes, Tor 1200, Google Chrome 1840, which is not surprising, but of course Avast. I initially thought Avast wouldn't be included here, yet it turned out to be the one that consumes the most. Now, following this, the browser that astonished us was Microsoft Edge, which was utilizing 670 megabytes of RAM, but merely 1.4% of CPU power. In other words, if we calculate the average of these two figures, Brave might indeed be the browser consuming the least amount of RAM, yet it also utilizes the highest amount of CPU in this scenario. Thus, on one side, it provides us with something beneficial, but on the other side, it takes something away. Meanwhile, if we compute the average of these two metrics for Edge, it would ultimately surpass all the others, rendering it the most efficient in terms of resource consumption. Then Tor, as we observe in this context, utilized a substantial 1200 megabytes in this particular instance of RAM usage. And then there's the CPU usage, which was a significant 18%, which is considerably large. Clearly, let's not even delve into a vast, but as we observe here, Tor is one of those browsers that is frequently lauded for its security features, but truly, it doesn't make much sense to employ a browser that offers so much security, but simultaneously removes so much convenience when we're navigating the internet, which is ultimately what we're perpetually seeking. Ultimately, in terms of browsing speed, Brave achieved the highest score with a remarkable 206 in this particular benchmark, indicating its superior performance in terms of internet browsing speed. Conversely, the least impressive among these was Tor, which scored a mere 76.1 as you can observe here. Greetings, I sincerely apologize for the interruption of this video, but I wanted to kindly remind you that if you appreciate this type of content, please do not forget to subscribe. Clearly, in this particular scenario, a higher score is preferable, which is precisely why Tor ends up being the least favorable. Concerning the software utilized as a benchmark for security, it was conducted with a total of 430 tests, and as we observe here, the superior one with a higher score being more advantageous is Avast, which exceeded 403 tests and stands as the best in terms of security. 
Now let's examine the strengths of each of these browsers and I'll provide you with a general point that could serve as my conclusion from everything this individual has shared with us here, which you can read in the video description to understand the purpose of each of these browsers. So let's proceed. Initially, we have Opera. This browser offers commendable speed, efficient battery savings and a complimentary VPN, but the RAM usage is excessively high. Therefore, if your priority is speed and battery savings, especially if you utilize this browser on a laptop it will function quite effectively for instance i use it on a desktop pc and battery savings don't particularly concern me because it's connected to the power supply so it doesn't make much sense unless you are consistently concerned about energy savings however truly the only other beneficial feature it offers is the free vpn subsequently we have brave which is the one i personally prefer it's the quickest and utilizes the least resources, although it's in slight competition with Edge. It includes an ad blocker that you can observe here, which simply blocks or has shields to enable the blocking of certain trackers and elements in our daily browsing. This feature provides it with a strong advantage, which is excellent security. It's not the most secure, but it's among the best and most customizable in terms of security. As you can see here, we can modify a lot. Then we have Microsoft Edge, which never was, and now it is. What do I mean by this? In the past, there was widespread skepticism regarding Edge, primarily because it originated from Internet Explorer and was not initially built on the Chromium platform. However, once they made the decision to base the browser on Chromium, its performance became truly impressive. It is seamlessly integrated with Windows 11, which means that as soon as you install Windows, Edge is automatically included. In this respect, it is quite commendable, although it might have a slightly smaller selection of extensions compared to other browsers, albeit this is in its native form. We are also aware that Microsoft Edge is fully compatible with Google Chrome extensions, so encountering significant issues in that aspect is unlikely. Additionally, as I previously mentioned, since it is inherently integrated with Windows, if you are an individual who frequently utilizes numerous Windows 11 tools in their native form, this browser will genuinely be the most suitable choice for you because it will allow you to seamlessly complement the entire ecosystem. After all, that is the essence of it, much like iOS, where individuals purchase iPads, Macs, Apple Watches, and iPhones. Precisely due to the fact that they are integral components of that entire ecosystem, they facilitate the connection of one device with another. Microsoft operates in a very similar manner even though they do not possess mobile devices. In this particular instance, we are aware of what transpired with the mobile operating system, but that is a separate subject. Nevertheless, if we utilize specific Windows tools, it would prove to be quite beneficial, and furthermore, it is accessible on Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android platforms. Then we have Vivaldi, which I genuinely appreciate. It's an exceptionally innovative web browser with workspaces, which I believe is fantastic. However, there's one aspect it mentions regarding intelligent resource management, but in reality, this browser is exceptionally customizable you can modify absolutely everything but it consumes a significant amount of ram and cpu so this claim in my opinion doesn't quite hold true i consider it to be for more advanced users if you're someone who merely uses browsers to open a tab watch videos and that's it it might not appear to be a very advanced browser to you you truly have to explore all the features of the browser to fully comprehend it in this particular instance, we possess a diverse range of configurations, which I would consider to be more appropriate for somewhat more advanced users to fully take advantage of them. Next, we have the UR browser, which claims, finally a browser that safeguards your privacy. As you can observe, it resembles a somewhat older design, reminiscent of how Chrome appeared in the past. This particular browser emphasizes privacy, maintains a decent equilibrium of resources, yet has a relatively smaller user base. This becomes significant when you're trying to find individuals who use the same browser as you, whether it's for extensions or advice related to the browser. For instance, there are times when I create videos discussing 10 extensions for Google Chrome, 10 extensions for Google. Regarding Microsoft Edge, unfortunately, in the UR browser, you won't encounter this situation because there aren't a significant number of individuals utilizing this particular browser. And of course, a timeless classic in the realm of browsers, the Firefox browser. This browser once posed substantial competition to Google and was essentially the primary rival. Firefox is robust in terms of privacy and security, which is why a considerable number of individuals opt to use it. However, to be honest, it is among the slower options available. Naturally, if you utilize this browser in your everyday activities, you might not perceive 
perceive a substantial difference, but personally, when I occasionally use Google Chrome, sometimes Edge, and then transition to Firefox, I do experience a noticeable slowness. I'm uncertain if it's due to the animations or the structural design of the browser, but I genuinely perceive a certain lag. Now, we present Opera GX, a specialized web browser meticulously tailored for gaming enthusiasts. As we observe here, it proclaims, experience an unparalleled browsing and gaming environment on both mobile and desktop platforms, set constraints on CPU, RAM, and network consumption, utilize Discord and Twitch directly from the sidebar, and synchronize mobile and desktop browsers using the flow file sharing capability. Thus, as you can discern, this browser is specifically designed for gamers and includes integration for Twitch and Discord. The RAM consumption is relatively high, but we can regulate it through the options they specify here. There's a dial resembling a small wheel that permits us to adjust the amount of RAM we wish to allocate, the extent of CPU usage, whether to reduce or increase it. Furthermore, it features very distinctive auditory cues, and when you click on something, it produces a unique sound. When it launches, it's akin to the start or introduction of a video game. Therefore, for those who are keen on customization and are gamers, this browser might captivate your interest significantly. Subsequently, we have the Tor browser, which is predominantly utilized for accessing the deep web. Let's not delve into that, I didn't mention anything, but in this particular instance, this browser is chiefly employed for that specific purpose. Consequently, I believe they don't prioritize enhancing other functionalities. Instead, it has been primarily employed for navigating through those intricate networks. This particular browser is renowned for its leadership in privacy and anonymity, but it evidently compromises on speed and demands a substantial amount of additional resources. If you are enthusiasts of Firefox, you'll discover that this browser possesses a remarkably similar interface, yet as I previously mentioned, it considerably restricts speed and consumes a significant amount of resources during operation. Subsequently, we have the conventional browser Google Chrome, Truly, there is no substitute for Chrome. To be honest, initially, prior to discovering Brave, I utilized Chrome and wouldn't consider switching from Chrome for anything in the world. There were approximately 20,000 browsers available, yet none managed to convince me otherwise. This is obviously the most popular and the most compatible, and if you are interested in having a community and support behind the browser, this is where you'll find it, within the Google community. There are many questions about Google Chrome and there are countless extensions. Obviously, you know, when something new comes out, for example, when ChatGPT was released and people wanted a ChatGPT extension, the first browser it was available for was indeed Google Chrome and it is completely compatible. The identical situation occurs with web pages. I am unsure about the underlying reason, but I am curious if you have ever encountered a web page that asserts it is solely compatible with Google Chrome. It's quite perplexing because I am using a browser built on Chromium and you can still install Google Chrome. It's somewhat peculiar. This has happened to me and it's slightly annoying that perhaps in Brave the page does not load properly even when disabling the security shields. However, in Chrome, simply accessing the page results in everything loading immediately without any issues. Therefore, compatibility is crucial. Nevertheless, this browser is quite demanding in terms of hardware usage when multiple tabs are open. This means that when you are browsing and opening numerous tabs, be prepared for Windows to to start slowing down significantly and ultimately we have avast secure browser which we are undoubtedly familiar with from avast for those who might not recall avast is an antivirus software and that is precisely where this browser was derived from this is the reason why this browser is the most secure option available but it is also the most resource intensive in terms of security, we will be thoroughly covered precisely because it comes with comprehensive support from OAS, but it's also the most resource demanding option because having additional processes to safeguard us while browsing the internet and avoiding web tracking and all those things, it will necessitate more RAM and CPU usage. Furthermore, in terms of protection, it includes banking protection, which many individuals are particularly interested in. However, if you are willing to sacrifice some of your hardware performance, the efficiency of your PC, and instead prioritize your security, then this would essentially be the optimal choice. In conclusion of the various web browsers we have been thoroughly discussing today, it can be confidently stated that the one I am currently using Brave emerges as the clear winner, particularly in terms of performance and speed. Meanwhile, the Avast Secure browser, which we have just reviewed, excels in terms of security. Additionally, Edge proved to be a pleasant surprise being both fast and efficient due to its seamless integration with Windows 11, and that would essentially be my top three. If you have any additional points, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. I sincerely hope you appreciated this comparison and I kindly encourage you to show some appreciation to the article we reviewed earlier as it genuinely merits it. It's unfortunate that it's primarily in English, but I made an effort to translate it for you in a manner that I believe captures its essence. Therefore, with that being mentioned, in the comment section, kindly leave an emoji of a rocket, an airplane, or something comparable to signify that we require a web browser that assists us in soaring through the vastness of the internet. For me personally, it's brave. I don't know about you all. See you next time. Bye bye.